All right, everybody. So if you've been online for like the last two weeks, you have seen the Velma discourse. Basically, HBO Max dropped this new uh, spinoff, this new take on Scooby-Doo, focused on Velma, but Velma is now a self-insert for Mindy Calling. Now, Mindy Calling is, well, her politics are not, like, overtly known, but in the times that she has let the mask slip on her politics before, they've been pretty reactionary. Apparently, she's pretty iffy on trans people. Uh, apparently, she has gone on rec- well, literally, there's a joke, joke, in the show, uh, hating on Me Too. She has said that The Office couldn't exist today because it would get cancelled by the crazy radical left. Mindy Calling is like an actual obje like an actual reactionary, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. She's a brown woman. And so the right will sort of instinctively assume she's like woke or progressive or whatever. And because of that, Velma has been labeled as a woke, progressive, left-wing show by the right incessantly, despite the fact that, I mean, the show literally has statements that are overtly pro-right-wing in it, that are framed in a positive light. Um, brown equals woke, that's what the right believes. That That is legitimately, what the, that is what they believe. So remember, the right thinks brown equals woke, and they also hate woke. They say things such as, Florida is where woke comes to die. What 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 do you think they mean by that? What, hey chat, what do they mean by that? Just curious on your thoughts. What do, th what do they mean by that? Well, what do they mean by that? Hmm. Anyway, I, I genuinely do think Mindy Calling is like, from everything that I've seen of her, just insufferable and awful, both like on a... I don't think she's funny, and I, I don't think she's, like, charismatic, and I also don't think she is a good person. Notably, because this video came out, and, uh, whew, um, let's just say Chris Raygun said it best with his quote tweet that got 85.2 thousand likes. He actually has a good take here, so I'm glad this got as much traction as it did, because his take is pretty good. I know the reverse the roles thing is looked on as a tired argument, and it really is a tired argument. Like, it really, like, every time I have to say, guys, come on, reverse the roles here, it really feels like you're that guy. But God, there are a lot of cases in our society where if you say reverse the roles and look at this exactly the same situation, it, it then suddenly starts to look sus, right? I know the reverse the roles thing is looked on as a tired argument, but I think it's beyond valid, especially here. It speaks volumes that she was just totally comfortable sharing this story on a talk show like this. So let's go ahead and look at what story she shared openly on a talk show, Conan O'Brien, I'll probably get copyrighted for this, um, that she just felt comfortable airing to the entire world. Let's watch. A real gentleman, yeah. real gentleman, he came on the show and we had to do this flashback sequence where we were in bed together in college. Mm -hmm. And we're just supposed to be having a conversation, but like, he's so tall and he's so handsome that in the middle of it, he was, he was just supposed to be like, what do you think, Mindy? And I was like, and that looked around and I improvised just kissing him in the scene, which is not in the script. It's not, the, see, you just went for it. You just, just started I, kissing that guy, that, was, that picture, he, yeah. He was just looming, he was looming above me. Yeah. And he asked me a question, I was not listening to him at all because who cares what he was saying? And I was just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, then, and then he reacted like that and, and I pretended it didn't happen. And then I walked backstage where we have two writer producers, um, Ike, and, Ike Baron Heltz and David Sasson, and they were like, hey man, what are you doing? You could be sued for that. And I got very scared uh, and then I said, um, tell anyone and you're fired. A real gentleman. So, there have been people saying this story was probably fake, and oh man, it would not surprise me for a story told on Conan O'Brien to be fake, but the fact that they would even fake that story and tell it publicly, I think says a lot, doesn't it? For one, I think it's pretty obvious where her hatred of Me Too comes from, considering she probably got a lot of hate for this, um, but also, it's not a funny joke, it's not a joke, it, it, I don't even think it's supposed, I don't think it's a joke. 
People are saying it is, but even if it is, the joke is it's funny when women break the consent and boundaries that men have. She didn't have consent to kiss him. I don't even think there was a pretext in which it would have been appropriate to assume it was okay to kiss him. This is a very clear case of just I, I, I full top X here. I'm going top X. I'm going full incel here, okay? I think this was an instance of a woman feeling as though she is entitled and won't get in trouble for breaking the consent of a man. Like, oh, girl kissing a guy? You're allowed to do that. Guys won't complain about that. If he gets, if anything, if he complains about it, people will call him gay. And that is a thing. That is a real thing. Hypers in chat, if you are a straight guy who's turned down a woman and the woman's first resort was to insult you by calling you gay or saying, what are you, gay? Like, that's happened to me before when I turned down a girl. Immediately like, what are you, gay? You don't want to fuck me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of ways in which our society is okay with girl boss women, you know, shaming dudes who don't want to have sex or shaming dudes for other things in that ballpark that if you did reverse the roles, it could be career ending for the guy. Well, actually, it would have been career-ending pre-Tate, because apparently you can just be a known sex trafficker now, and just, you'll have marches, literal marches, of teenagers chanting free, t for you to be freed. Yeah, women tend to go straight to dunking on guys' masculinity in the face of rejection. Not just in the face of rejection, but also, um, in arguments too, right? Like, as much as I fucking hate these posts, because I know who they're being posted by, there is definitely some merit to them, because I've seen, like, any argument between a guy and a girl who are in a relationship, uh, like, in public, where I have seen, I have literally seen women who will be in an argument with their boyfriend at, like, a restaurant or something about, like, I don't know, like, the most minute shit, and then she'll start raising her voice. And you can tell, like, she's raising her voice to try to, like, embarrass the guy, and will start saying things like, your dick is little, to the guy in, like, a restaurant. I've seen that happen. I was there when this happened. I was there and I was cringing the whole fucking time. And you know what? I don't believe her. I don't think that guy's dick was little. I think she was just doing that to try to embarrass him and get him to, like, agree with her in the argument. I, I was, like, eavesdropping on this shit. But, like, there there is a stereotype of women immediately jumping to, like, these insults on men's masculinity, whether it be their sexual prowess, whether, like, their sexuality, their value as a man being based around how many women they've had sex with, whatever. Basically playing into toxic masculinity, into the patriarchal, patriarchal tropes and expectations for both men and women, and using it as a way to shame men because they don't want to have sex. And it's okay because men are kind of expected to always be horny sex beasts who always want to fuck, right? Which is obviously not true. There's plenty of asexual men. Men aren't always horny. I know for I know right now, if a girl came into my room right now and hit, was like, hey, wanna fuck? I'd be like, who are you? No, not right now. I'm streaming. And also, like, like there, there are plenty of reasons why right now if a woman asked me to fuck, I'd be like, no, right? But for her to respond in some antagonistic way is a lot more normalized by our society, then, I mean, even the video we saw before today where it was the guy having the meltdown because the girl wouldn't have sex with him after the $5,000 date, like, while you got a lot of guys, we, we live in a rape culture and there's a lot of guys who defend that, there's a lot more people either willing to look past or defend this. Can I replay the clip without getting, like, copyright strike? Like, she literally just admits to pressuring her employees not to tell anyone because it could jeopardize her career. She didn't even think about the fact that she was breaking someone's consent. It wasn't even a thing that she'd been socialized to think of. And I do, I do think a lot of, like, MRAs, men's rights activists, whatever the fuck, do have a point on the idea that for men, it is less acceptable to say no. And for women who have been said no to by a man in regards to sex, it is more acceptable to shame, shit talk, make up rumors, gossip, whatever you want to do to shame that guy for saying no, that's normalized for women to do if the guy turned down the woman. Would you guys agree? Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass here, but I feel like I've never seen an instance 
of people shaming a woman in like a social space outside of the internet people shaming a woman for shaming a guy that doesn't want to have sex with her i've never seen a woman treated the same way as a guy is in that in that situation never once not in my life have i seen a woman who who exa acting that exact same way being treated the w same way guys do I, you speak truth. I don't think that it is reactionary, right-wing, or anti-feminist to understand that these things exist. In fact, I think it would be more feminist for us to recognize that these social issues exist and for us to co-opt discussions around them as feminist issues. I do think it is a feminist issue that many women are socialized to believe. Honestly, I think a lot of women are socialized to believe that they could never rape a man. That if they walked up to a guy and reached their hand down down his pants, it wouldn't be rape if they did that. I think a fair amount of women are probably socialized to think that wouldn't be rape if they did that. Because guys are always horny. Guys are, guys are the ones that are, that are, you know, always looking for sex, right? I've seen that type of double standard in real life. And I think that's... I don't think it's a genuine, real... Um, I don't think it's a genuine, real, like, overarching societal statistical threat. I don't think it's a massive problem on a statistical stale, scale. But what it is, is a re it is a problem. I don't think it is good for any group in our society to think that it is okay for them to shame someone that doesn't want to have sex with them. But at the same time, I don't think it's worth, like, literally dedicating all of our attention on. This is not as common... I think as as you know, it, it's not as harmful demonstrably to the world. I think as many other uh, you know gender related issues are. However, talking about this, making men or boys, mostly boys, let's be honest, who have experienced this or seen this double standard feel heard, feel seen. I honestly think that might be enough for a lot of guys out there that just feel like culture has turned their back on them and like bad things being done to them is okay, but it, it's not when it's done to women. Because a lot of these guys have been brainwashed into thinking that's what our culture thinks now. And it's women like this getting away with it that back up that narrative. It's not as common, but it's still worth talking about just so we don't get more Andrew Tates. Yeah, if we don't talk about it, if we don't discuss why these things happen and why they're a problem and, and explain that they're bad, then guess who's going to? Conservatives. Anti-feminists will. And, there will be a, and their claims will be that the left thinks that these things are good. We don't. I don't think these things are good. I don't think that men's value and worth should be based on how sexually appealing they are to women. I don't think that a man deciding he doesn't want to be sexually appealing to a woman or deciding he doesn't want to have sex with a woman should be a point of shame. But that's just me. That's just me. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like or commenting down below. It really helps the channel out a lot and makes YouTube push my content more in the algorithm to new people. You can also subscribe and ring the bell icon so YouTube tells you when I go live or upload a new video because they won't do it otherwise. And you can also follow my social medias linked down below in the description, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Fan Discord, etc. Um, so you can support me on my other platforms that... Uh, aren't the one you're watching on now. And of course, if you want to go the extra mile and support me financially, you can always do so by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website by hitting those two buttons in the top left, or uh, supporting me on YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.